All right. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for uh, joining our session today. So today I'm going to talk about uh, cloud-native uh, VNFs, uh, obviously in the space of NFV, and I'm uh, going to talk a little bit about the transformation that we are seeing right now in the NFV space. Obviously, a lot of uh, interesting perspectives coming from service providers, a lot of you know know-how uh, that that we've learned, you know, as as as, as as providing orchestration platform for, for NV, but also from the various other VNF vendors that we are uh, interacting with. So that's, that's uh, primarily going to be the, the, the topic of the talk uh, today. So just to, so, so that I would know who's in the crowd today, so who's, uh, who's here from a service provider side of the story? All right, about almost half of the room. Who's here from the VNF vendors side of the house? Oh, interesting. So, so it's like kind of split into two, <laughs> kind of like <laughs> the boys and the girls in third grade. <laughs> so uh, I'm uh, Arthur Brezen, uh, director of uh, product management for Cloudify with Gigaspaces. And in fact, I, I wear several kinds of hats within Gigaspaces and, uh, and, and act in different kinds of roles. Uh, so uh, I'm also the uh, project lead for uh, for Project Apache, which for Project Aria, which is a, an Apache Software Foundation project, a new project that we've just started uh, several months ago to implement a pure vendor-neutral Tosca-based orchestration framework. I'm going to talk briefly about it later on, and I also served as a, served as a TSC member uh, as part of the OpenO community uh, and part of the OpenO project. Now coming together with, with, uh, with Ecomp and, and, and creating the ONAP community. So last week we had the first developer community. Quite, uh, quite exciting times, I think, for, for the orchestration and for the NV space in general. Uh, okay. So in a nutshell, Cloudify is a pure play orchestration platform. I'm not going to talk about Cloudify today. Rather, I'm going to talk about uh, cloud native uh, VNFs, but just in a nutshell, so you would you know, sort of see the perspective of us in the world. So Cloudify is a pure play orchestration platform serving both as a service and resource orchestration, but also as a VNF manager capable of orchestrating you know, the different kinds of VNFs and applications on, on, on various multi-cloud environments. Uh, where the philosophy behind building the product. Oh, it's happening over there as well. Uh, thank you. Okay, not touching it anymore. <laughs> uh, perfect. This was working. Looks brighter. All right, let's let's give it a try. Yeah, hoping this won't give you any flashbacks now. So, uh, so Cloudify is a pure play orchestration platform, a Tosca-based orchestration platform, uh, built uh, built around the philosophy of 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 the fact that technologies constantly change. So, to us, you know, supporting multi-vim, multi-cloud type of environment is kind of the pre-built uh, feature and the way Cloudify was was built. And essentially, this is the perspective we've been operating around uh, with many uh, service providers, but also with many VNF vendors wanting to use the capabilities of the platform to ship it for, for their own you know, VNF needs and integrating them, uh, the VNFs themselves, into the platform using capabilities from the platform. So I'm going to 
touch a little bit about uh, those points as well today. Uh, so we're going to talk about the transformation, you know, the, VN, the, the NFV 1.0 that started, I think, in the year 2014 with the Etsy, uh, Etsy uh, announcing the NFV uh, specification. And right now we're seeing this huge transformation going into NFV 2.0 where VNFs are, are now much more native and, 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 and utilizing much better the environment than, than right now uh, than, than, than what they used to do in, in the first iteration. And touch a, bit, a little bit on the OpenStack side of things and how can we better leverage OpenStack for that. So back in the day, you know, obviously you know, this side of the room is, is much aware that, that uh, onboarding a new service is a very costly uh, process. It takes a long period of time to onboard a new service, you know, you call your VNF, you call your, your vendor for a specific service that you would like to onboard. This whole process takes a very long period of time. It requires a lot of manual integration within the existing services that, that the provider already runs. And when you're finally done with that long process, it's, it's statically bound to the environment. So changing things. And, and, and shifting you know, services to new needs that you expect your platform to provide is, is, is super challenging. So you know, coming from this world where you have a lot of appliances that are built into the environment, so the first step to, 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 to reach to, you know, to, to the network function virtualization and essentially to better utilize the commodity hardware that is much cheaper and, and easier to set up. So the first step there is, is usually you know, taking the specific applications Right, taking the, the appliances themselves and simply virtualize them, right? Put them as a virtual machines, create maybe images or create some sort of a automatic process that maybe installs them. Uh, and using obviously commodity, either using commodity operating systems for, for, for providing that and creating the images using pro, pro, uh, commodity operating systems or, or operating systems that are more uh, well suited for networking workloads. But again, the main message here is that we are not, you know, obviously NFV has given us a lot of transformation in the way we think and consider about building our environment. But fundamentally, we haven't changed much the way we're, we're delivering and utilizing the hardware. We're just, you know, sort of boxing it around and, and, and making it a little bit simpler uh, to onboard into environments. Now, obviously, this has a huge impact, but this is just the first step where we, you know, we just take this appliance and, 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 and package and automate some of the processes around it. So now instead of onboarding a new service, now instead of you know, spending it about 18 months or two years and two and a half years, and these are you know, the good cases that we've seen, you know, now it takes usually contacting the VNF vendors and you know, once the contacting is done and we've planned our integration, it takes us about you know, several hours or days or maybe weeks to onboard a new service, which is obviously by far much better than where we used to be uh, at before NFV. But again, nothing you know, fundamentally changes in, in this scenario. We're still using the same software. We're still using the same software management and, 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 and orchestration and, and automation capabilities that we've used to use before. So we're using the same you know, models to, to, to shape the network and, and to, shift it, uh, to, to configure the network. And again, there's a lot of room for improvement here. And obviously, there's, there's this nice little point that you know, obviously, we vir virtualize things and we might make, might make a better utilization of the hardware. But still, it's our, you know, we're running huge images, huge virtual machines with full-blown operating systems. And you know, think of a, a physical server running 10 or, or, or 15 uh, instances or virtual machines of, of the same operating system, and on top of that running you know, some layer of a software that we actually need to run our service. Right? It's all about the service. It's never about the infrastructure or, on the, or, or, or the pieces we, we need to lay to, to bring that service on board. So still, we have you know, much room to, uh, to better utilize the, the hardware that we are planning here. And we've seen you know, a lot of evidence for all, from all the major uh, service providers around the world, you know, guys such as AT&T, Vodafone, and Tele2, and Deutsche, you know, claiming, hey, you know, we've done this first step of, of moving from appliances, from things that are statically bound into the environment, 
to, to having things virtualized, which is a, obviously a major progress. But then again, you know, we are still not utilizing uh, as much as we need uh, the environment that, that we have. So we're buying a bunch of boxes. Now think of a, 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 a certain service that we are onboarding. Now think of providing you know, that same service in a highly available environment, a highly available configuration, and multi-region environment. So instead of running a single machine, you're now running 15 instances of the same machine just to run a single service. So this is still a little, you know, still a little crazy and still a lot of room for improvement. Hence, you know, the call for the cloud native VNFs. So the whole point of, of cloud v v native VNFs is be much more efficient and, you know, to create the actual services to utilize the environment directly, not to be bound to this transformation that we're making from virtualizing the applications, rather creating the services themselves in a manner where they natively consume the infrastructure and the environment that we are providing it to, right? So again, think of you know, SDN, for example. So we have now full control uh, with software over our, uh, over our uh, network environment and we create, you know, on the fly we can create networks, right? So now think of onboarding a new service that requires a network of its own, for example. So in this new environment, it's not just, you know, it's not just about providing the needed infrastructure to just shift the application from, you know, from one layer to another, rather utilizing the infrastructure and the software directly and, you know, realizing that now the services that we can provide are essentially can, can directly utilize, can, can directly use the infrastructure for the service needs and not for the infrastructure that provides that extra layer uh, needed for the software. And, you know, obviously that, that also has a huge benefit uh, from cost perspective. Because now uh, we're really running, you know, our, our, net, our services that we're onboarding uh, essentially consume much better the environment, hence the costs of it become much, much more uh, commoditized. So now think of, of this, this application that we have, you know, moved around from being physical to being virtual to being now cloud native. Now, if we re-architect that same application, with, uh, with the notion in mind of utilizing the infrastructure directly, rather, you know, being bound to, to virtual machines. Now, uh, this, this, this new notion actually allows us to reach, you know, hyperscale much, much more easily. Again, to us now, a, 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 a service is, 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 is a container which is scalable, which is, you know, natively utilizes, for example, the load balancers of the environment, the, the software-defined network that the environment can provide us, etc. It's also architected for, uh, to expect failures. Again, you know, taking the lesson learned from, the lesson learned from, from Google, for example, who, you know, building their soft engine, uh, so their, their search engine algorithms, expecting there would be hardware failures. In fact, they have, you know, very precise statistics of how many server would experience failures uh, out of certain amounts. So, when they build their software, they build it for failure and expecting failure will come. Uh, hence, you know, the service that they're providing would not expect service because the, the application itself is written directly with the environment and, and, and expecting that failure. Now think of, you know, from, a, from providing a network service, from a service provider perspective, you know, having those notions in mind uh, when creating when, and building these, these services. So we're definitely, you know, in this paradigm of, of making this shift, and I think it's, we're still relatively in the early days. Now I think everyone more thinks of, of you know, cloud native as, you know, just containerizing VNFs, and, and that's definitely an important step for, for, for that process, and, you know, definitely exciting times from that perspective. Now, and so additional key element is the fact that we have, you know, access not only to the overlay networks that we are creating as service providers, but now we have also direct access to the underlay networks and we can integrate between them. So again, think of, you know, in OpenStack example, we have 
a rich set of plugins, rich set of, 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 uh, of uh, software uh, that, that provides these network services to OpenStack itself. Now think of an application consuming these kinds of capabilities directly or creating specific networks just for that application. So now that once we have that, you know, that control, uh, again, things are much well integrated, and obviously that has a huge impact over costs. And you know, one of the additional changes that, that this industry is, is going to, to, to experience is you know, the, the pricing models. Because right now, most VNFs essentially are being charged uh, the way they used to be before even we, we just had through it, uh, went through this transformation. So right now, think of a network service that we're onboarding, and we're not you know, just counting the number of services or servers or the number of appliances. Now we have to rethink about uh, rethink the whole uh, financing model, because right now we're spinning much more instances of the same service in, 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 in more locations uh, to provide you know, that resilience, that high availability, that, that, fail, that uh, failure expectation, et cetera. So that's another, another element that we, that we are seeing and, and we foresee that, that would come. And we definitely you know, see a few very good examples of, of, you know, of, of the VNF vendors already starting to think about this approach and starting to utilize uh, the, native, uh, the native capabilities of the platform. So you know, Versa is, is one good example, you know, providing the VCP and SD1. Everything is being fully orchestrated and automated on, on any type of environment, right? So, you can use multiple type of VIMs to, to, to use to run this software, uh, which is obviously self-managed. Another example from a, from a different, uh, different uh, which takes a little different approach, and uh, which is Ruckus Wireless that provide you know, their, their Wi-Fi services and having, that, uh, uh, having a, uh, a software-defined management layer which is you know, provided to customers as a service. So these you know, two examples are really you know, powerful and show, showcasing you know, how a VNF vendor can utilize all the new capabilities that we are getting from the environment, not just you know, making that, 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 that migration to virtual machines. And in fact, you know, this you know, uh, produces much, uh, much, faster, uh, much faster way to deliver the services uh, and, and you know, allows them to, to iterate through the software development cycles also much quickly. So again, they, as vendors, being able to utilize these services allows them to create their products much quicker and essentially stabilize them and provide better, better features. So what a, a cloud-native VNF looks like, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, today I think most of us think of cloud-native VNFs as just you know, consuming containers, and obviously that's not, not the only perspective that, that we have to take care of. So <clears throat> the first element is software defined. So again, a network service is, is, is you know, a piece of software that's architected in, in a certain way. Uh, and again, by the fact that it's architected uh, uh, by, by a way that it's integrated into the environment, uh, it, it can easily you know, uh, uh, provision, manage the environment, and utilize the environment uh, for its own needs and shape the environment based on its own needs. Uh, also designed for DevOps. So we've learned a lot you know, from the DevOps community on, on how to manage services and how to manage, you know, not necessarily network services from the DevOps side of things, but how to deliver much quicker the services that organizations need. So there's a lot of lessons learned from you know, all these cycles. And we're seeing you know, many VNF vendors taking this, th these lessons and, and putting them into practice uh, when developing VNFs. So right now, you, know, you, have, you have showcases, you know, for example, the Ruckus example, right? So again, think of providing a management layer for their software using, for example, Jenkins and CI CD processes for delivering management capabilities. Again, think of the agility and think of, of how quickly it, and, and easily it's, it is for them to, devel to deliver a bug fix, for example, for a certain major, major you know, issue that, they're, that their customer is experiencing. So, uh, and also monitoring, which also is a, is a key element for, for, for delivering you know, the close uh, loop mechanism. Again, you know, if something happens in the environment, you have to respond to it in, you know, in, in the at least uh, five nines uh, probability. So you have to respond to it quickly and you have to have 
that monitoring piece embedded as part of the application. So the application itself should, should monitor not only you know, the components of the application, but also should take under account the infrastructure that it usal, utilizes to, to bring you know, the services that the application needs. So again, you know, think of the closed loop environment where you know, I as an application, I'm aware that a certain region, for example, is down now, and I can run a certain, uh, a certain uh, action to, uh, to, to fix that situation, either to change some rules in the, in the, in the load balancer, for example, and steer some of the traffic to another direction, right? Now think of, of that capability being built into the application itself, not something as, that I, as, as an integrator or I, as, as an operator, have to now manually deal with uh, when I have that failure. So multitenancy is also uh, one key element for, uh, for, uh, for NFV. Uh, obviously, you know, we don't, uh, when we onboard a new service, in many cases, we just want to reuse the same service and want to make sure that this same service, you know, we don't want to spin it up multiple times, rather we want to use the same service uh, for multiple customers, right? It would be much more cost effective. So we already, you know, we have a certain region that we are providing services to. We have this application onboarded to that region. We just want to re reuse the same one for multiple type of customers. So that's uh, also a key element and multi-vim. So this is OpenStack Summit. OpenStack obviously is you know, the de facto Vim layer for, for NFV, but again, you know, some cases you would like to use VMware. Other cases, you know, we already heard you know, some service providers thinking and, and starting and playing around and already running some not mission critical, I think, uh, services over public clouds. So we do hear you know, those service providers utilizing AWS or utilizing you know, uh, public clouds such as Azure to uh, migrate some of the workloads to those clouds to be you know, much more cost efficient, right? So not in all cases I would like to stand up my own private data center and bring up a whole uh, pub, uh, private cloud on top of that and manage that or you know, hire a managed service from, from one of the managed service uh, vendors, which is perfectly fine, but you know, being, being able to choose Based, based on, on what's cost effective for me as a service provider. This is also a key element uh, that drives you know, the, the cloud native uh, VNF uh, development. So as I mentioned, OpenStack, in fact, you know, what, we've, what we've hearing with discussions from most, I think, uh, service providers, uh, to, to them OpenStack is you know, the de facto standard for implementing the Vim layer, the, the virtual infrastructure management layer and to provide you know, these services uh, on top of which the, the network services would run. So the really cool part about OpenStack is that it's, it, it's highly customizable and it's not you know, take all or, 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 or leave it, right? So you have multiple types of services and each of these services in fact are, are highly configurable. So you know, Neutron, I think it's a very good example but it's true for all services. So I don't have to use the Open V switch uh, implementation to do my, uh, to do my for example, uh, overlay, uh, oh, uh, overlay networks or my underlay networks. I can switch to another vendor. Now, you know, having that vendor being part of, of this ecosystem also allows uh, me to utilize the additional services coming from that vendor. And, you know, I am as an application developer, I can also utilize them to integrate these capabilities into uh, my VNF that I'm providing. So again, you know, think of the possibilities uh, that, that, that I, when I develop a software, I can detect which kind of layer and which kind of capabilities my infrastructure provides me and integrate them and utilize them on specific cases, right? For, for example, we have you know, some uh, hardware offloading capabilities coming from, uh, from, from the hardware directly, right? I can detect the type of hardware and my, my VNF can function in a certain way when I see that I can utilize these kinds of uh, capabilities. Right. So, and another second, uh, also very important uh, piece to that is that OpenStack itself is coming with tons of services, right? So, Neutron is the most obvious one, and we are all familiar with that, but, you know, 
if, we are, if I'm running, for example, containers, maybe courier would be interesting for me for my, you know, for my networking for my container environment. I have designate, firewall as a service, load balancer as a service, vitrage for, for monitoring. So I have tons of services that OpenStack provides me and I can utilize them as part of integrating them uh, into my, my VNFs. And it's not a take it or leave it situation with OpenStack, right? There are tons of services and I can essentially pick and choose the best ones uh, for, my, for my environment. So um, a key element to all of this is to be able to automate and orchestrate and then manage my application, right? It's not just about doing that one-time integration project. It's about being able to orchestrate it in any type of environment and in fact, you know, separating the pieces, the software pieces from my infrastructure pieces, from my cloud pieces, and allowing the, uh, me to, to orchestrate them on multiple kinds of environments. So in these cases, you know, the orchestration becomes very key, uh, becomes a key to, to, to success of such, such uh, uh, NV uh, and, and VNF-based uh, environments, where in the cloud-native world, it's not just about, you know, the very you know, basic kinds of, 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 uh, of, of services that we like to use, it's also about making sure that they perform well. So for example, we have you know, uh, projects such as DPDK and, 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 and FDIO, for example. We have Intel EPA. So we have tons of projects that optimize all the layers needed to implement a VNF. And again, think of, you know, and when you think of orchestration, of, of, of these uh, services, you know, think of an orchestrator that, that would be able, should be able to recognize that this is my environment and should be able to optimize the VNF based on whatever is ha actually happening underneath it. So it, again, you know, you know think of, of the, the contrast of, of coming, you know, of, and, and migra just migrating the application to a VM to where the application itself is, is aware of what's happening underneath it. So another, uh, another uh, possible element that we are seeing actually from uh, many uh, VNF vendor uh, providers is the notion of having an embeddable orchestration platform, an, an, an embeddable orchestration layer. So again, think of an application. And again, think of, of, of an orchestrator that is not something that, that's, that's solely operated uh, by, by the service provider, rather something that the VNF vendor can take something that's lightweight, and the VNF vendor can take that and just embed that as part of his application. And in fact, treat all the components of his application as microservices where that orchestration piece, that embedded orchestration piece, is, is capable of figuring out the environment itself. Uh, again, think of, you know, one, one example comes to mind is Clearwater. So again, IMS, tons of services to, to uh, to enable that, you know, one network service that we want to provide to our customers. Again, from an orchestrator point of view, these are multiple microservices, or, you know, some of them are micro, some of them are, are huge, but the orchestrator should be able to, to take care of them and make sure that all the endpoints of these microservices, in fact, interact success successfully with, uh, with one another. So what makes an, 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 open, an, an embeddable orchestrator and the fact that I missed there was that you know, open source is obviously a huge key and a huge differentiator in what's actually happening in, in the environment itself. Again, open source is a major driver behind what, what, we're, what we're actually seeing in the NV, in NV space. So you know, make it, make, making the orchestrator obviously you know, very easy to, to OEM it and, and to white label it, uh, making sure you know, that we have Access to the source code is important. Again, again, think of a software developer that provides that network service, and he doesn't know what kind of software he's, he's delivering with, with, uh, with his service. Uh, think of it, he's not, a, not, not having a visibility into what's happening in his network service. So open source is a key to that. Open governance is also very important there, where you know, the VNF vendors would like to not only be able to tell how the software runs, but also be able to shift it based on whatever they're seeing with their customers. Again, I'm a VNF provider. I would like, if I'm embedding some sort of a project, open source project as part of my software, I would like to be able to 
control it and to be able to, uh, to, to add to it, to contribute to that, and to you know, do bug fixes, do feature uh, implementations that are coming from my customers. Again, this is something that is, uh, some, something that is very you know, close to the software that, uh, that I'm writing for, you know, the service itself that I'm writing. So two examples uh, that, that, we, uh, that we deliver to customers. One is, is Cloudify is, is, a, is a full blown orchestration platform, does the full lifecycle uh, management of a service. Uh, the other one is Project Aria, uh, which we've launched uh, several months ago when it's already been used in multiple uh, projects, also as part of uh, OpenO and, and, and ONUP. It is just forming now together, where Aria is essentially is a, is a lightweight a framework for developing, you know, Tosca-based uh, products. So essentially, if you want a, something that supports Tosca, you can de do Tosca deployment, not just not the full lifecycle uh, orchestration. So, so, so Aria would be the, the way to go. Uh, and we're seeing also a lot of effort from the, the various, you know, standard, standardization bodies to standardize the way we deliver these network services. Again. You know, right now we have a lot of different opinions from, from, the, uh, from the standard bodies. Obviously, you know, OS is this shaping up Tosca and Tosca for NAV. We have Etsy defining, uh, defining you know, the, the, the various uh, IFA specs. We have MEF defining LSO and, and you know, the different uh, APIs. But also we see a lot of uh, traction from the open source projects implementing them. Some of them are more compliant, some of them are less compliant, but you know, in fact, where the implementation goes, uh, it also shapes up the standard bodies. So this is also an important element to, to do the VNFs themselves. And you know, one key factor that we're seeing the common across orchestrators is, is Tosca. So Tosca allows us to, to separate you know, the intent, the what I want to build, what my application looks like, what is the topology of the application, what are the life cycle operations of each BNF component, and separate all those from the actual implementation of each of them. So again, you know, just think of, of, of a service, of a, of a server, of a virtual server in instantiation, right? So when I define my application, I want to define the topology and, and, and the, the, the architecture of the application. And, and then you know, I want to separate that definition from the actual implementation of, of several pieces, and then I can reuse several pieces. So again, you know, think of, of, of that part that in actually instantiates the VM and, and uh, interacts with the OpenStack API, for example, right? I don't have to rewrite that code that launches, that does the Nova Create API call, right? It's essentially the same one, and I should be able to reuse that for every application that I'm bu building, but it's, it's, it's not something that, you know, it's something that should be standard across the VNF vendors, and I have VNF vendors should just define, you know, should, ju should just choose the right architecture for the building blocks that I'm using uh, for my application. So this is, you know, I don't, I don't have time to go into the, into the example today, but this is an example of, of, of a cloud native uh, VNF. This is just a Quagga, it uses a Quagga router running on Kubernetes, uh, on a Kubernetes cluster, which is scalable. We have a load balancer that uses Nginx uh, on, on Docker Swarm. And again, using Tosca, we are defining the multiple relationships between these objects. This is, you know, this is my whole application. This is how my application looks like. And then, you know, a certain piece can take that architecture and orchestrate that on, on an environment based on whatever the environment I'm, I'm using uh, in my actual, in my actual uh, production uh, lab uh, or in my lab or my actual production environment. So I'll be happy to share the slide and you can just, you know, go to the link and see the actual code and how it looks like, how it operates, et cetera. So one t takeaway I would like you know, for you to, to live from this presentation is, is a VNF a lab that we are offering. It's an on-demand lab that comes with, with, with an orchestrator and with an OpenStack environment. So again, if you don't have the resources or you don't have servers, for example, to launch a, a dedicated OpenStack environment just to play around with, with applications, so that's something that we, you know, we're happy to, to help with and, and you know, happy to educate on how model-driven orchestration works and then provide the needed environment for that. Any questions?
So there are two mics over here. Yeah. Sure, I'll ask a quick question on this. The whole idea of lifestyle, um, life cycle management, I imagine, is a pretty rich one. There must be a lot to it in terms of the relationship between the manager, the orchestrator, and the and the application itself. Can you can you talk about some of the uh, issues you've seen in, in that area? So uh, I can talk about, about multiple types of issues. Could you like maybe point pinpoint me to well, certain yeah, areas that you are more I'm, interested in? Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid I'm thinking very broadly, but I think you know it obviously has to do with the um, the installation, the configuration, and the monitoring, and subsequently the the uh, continuous integration, and then the, the you know the uh, eventually divorcing the service and replacing with something else entirely. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of bits and pieces in there. Yeah. And I'm sure there's, I don't know, I don't think there's a lot of standards uh, are really available, so there's probably a whole area that has to be standardized. And so today, when you're dealing with something like this, like what are your biggest single pro problems? Yeah, definitely. So us, you know, we are providing a certain solution that, you know, that we are standing behind, so we're making sure it works. But definitely there's a lot of work needed to be done to standardize. So we have a standard for defining the topology, that's Tosca. We have a way to interact with the multiple components, but the interfaces are, are not well defined enough in, in Tosca, and that's something that we probably should work as a community to, to better to, to improve. So, so we have you know, standard lifecycle operations such as you know, configure, create, start, stop, but you know, what about the day two operations? What about you know, specific configurations on specific on containers versus servers, for example, right? So there are multiple bits to the implementation that we, you know, we take care of as part of the implementation, as part of the solution, but we should better work on to standardize that as, 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 a, as, a, as, a, as an ecosystem, because it's not enough that we as Cloudify just, you know, offer that solution. Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I saw uh, on your early slides, you mentioned there's a, a DevOps for the AFV 2.0. So, in your opinion, so right now for uh, for service uh, for the NFV vendors, so they sell to the uh, operators. They always has to package the software, or they can do like the uh, uh, Docker container, like you mentioned on your slide. So, uh, so last week I went to AT and T. There's a conference, and they even uh, create some kind of certification. So that basically they have doing process. So for the vendors trying to deploy on the production side, so they have to go through the pro certain process. But on the DevOps basis, that means you have to, uh, from vendors, their software has to deploy to the production directly. So for this kind of the uh, uh, process or activity, how do you see in the future the industry is heading? Yeah, so my wish, is, is for a VNF to be as easily deployed as, as I install applications on an iPhone or an Android. I should, you know, I should have a catalog. I should choose from that catalog, catalog based on whatever you know, the, the specifications that I need. Maybe some of them would be specific to my environment. And, but, but essentially, you know, the process should be as simple as that, or, or at least you know, coming close to as simple as that. And you know, we have different tools. And we're still far, far ahead for, from being you know, there. We can easily package them, for, but for specific solutions, again, you know, from Cloudify's perspective, we package application in a certain way. And you know, we're working with multiple VNF vendors to package their VNFs, and then with the service providers, you know, obviously Cloudify being that centralized platform. But we as an industry, as always, you mentioned you were last week at the ONAP Developer Summit, probably, right, in, in, in New Jersey. So, right, so from, from an ONAP perspective, again, there's a huge certification guide that talks through how to onboard an application and package that. So I think we should have, we have to have a standard way to deliver that. Like our perspective on that is, you know, we launched Project Aria specifically for, to solve that problem, to have a, a certain way to, 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 to uh, which is thin enough and so that everyone could just consume very easily to, and to package applications as part of that, that's Project Aria. But you know, as an industry, let's see, we'll, we'll see how, how things go and if we, if we go to that direction or we won't be able to solve you know, the challenges for that. Any more questions? All right, thank you very much. <laughs>